Alright. Hi, my name is Mario. Uh, today I woke up at 5 a.m. for my alarm and decided to have a take a jog, right? And also, as soon as I got home, I eat a healthy breakfast. I make sure that um, on my way here, I'm listening to Beethoven uh, to calm my mind as I'm uh, preparing for this um, presentation, this speech, right? Well, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> seven o'clock comes up, I miss 15 alarms, and I just barely make it here to present this, right? Well, the point I'm trying to make is that you make decisions every single day, right? You make decisions to, like, like I did, to have a rough day. You make decisions um, to, like you would be right now, whether or not to listen to my speech, pay full attention to it because it's interesting, or decide that it's not interesting and go right back to your phone, chill, just relax, you know, wait for my presentation to be over. But um, as I was researching and, and thinking of what to, to do for the speech, I realized like AI is becoming more of a prominent um, like prominent uh, uh, prominent thing, prominent thing, right? So. AI is starting to become thing like it's starting to become uh, prominent enough that it's just it's um, going into an avenue of our decisions, the decision making, decision making that um, is very vital. At twenty four seven, we make these decisions, and I wanted to see whether or not AI was worth or or should be uh, a factor in our everyday decision making. Well, I discovered it's not. AI should not be the, the thing that we are using to make these, to make decisions in our everyday lives, let alone decisions that AI is making right now, right? Artificial intelligence is being used in, in cases where it should just not be. Um, one of these uh, avenues is uh, courtrooms. Courtrooms are um, using AI to decide whether or not a person should have more or less time. And I thought that was beyond me, that was crazy, right? How are AI going to be the ones deciding whether or not people should live in their a cell for 10 more years than they normally would be, right? Well, that's not what the judges think. Um, they decide that AI is a perfect reason or a perfect avenue of, of deciding on someone's future. And they do this by getting um, their own personal little algorithm, right? They use their profile that they're given through trial and run it through this algorithm. Right? This algorithm decides whether they're high risk or low risk. So whether or not you're high, high risk or low risk depends on one <coughs> or maybe two things, I would say. Um, depends on your, your profile, of, like your background, things like of that nature, or just your appearance, right? The crazy thing is that AI in, in this one case, uh, ProPublica, a, one of my sources today was that uh, two armed robbers got caught for, for stealing uh, around $80 worth of, of, of uh, stuff from, uh, I, I believe it was Home Depot. And they, get con they, get, they go on trial. The judge runs these two people. They are um, a partners in crime, one, being a white male, the other being a, a black female. This uh, court case ran these, the judge uh, ran these people, and it, um, it turns out that these, these two people, one being the white male, did a lot more things in, in, in the past, 
right? He was very, um, he was very, uh, had a lot of criminal activity. He, um, uh, like he would, he would steal before and, and uh, his partner, this black female, didn't do much. The most she would do is uh, steal candy from a baby, right? But when the judge ran their, their profiles, the black female ended up getting more time and higher risk, right? And this white male, even though he had such a criminal background, he only got a low risk, which is not that much, right? This person, um, this black female, did more time because the AI recognized a black face and, and gave it what an average black person would do in jail. They would have high risk, they would, after jail, they would do, like, end up being uh, more criminal, but it's not the case. Actually, it was backwards. The white male ended up getting out of jail, doing more crimes. This black female, when she got done with her horrible sentence, she went on to live her life, right? Well, um, there's another case, not just that. Like, courtrooms are horrible places where AI should be, right? But there's not only that, there's um, cases where uh, things like you're familiar with uh, the female voice Siri is um, being uh, programmed to have responses like uh, to, the, to the phrase, uh, you're a B word, bitch, right? She's being called that and uh, she decides to respond in a, in a way that uh, is very, very offensive, right? Not offensive to most people, but specifically to um, the female gender, right? She decided to say, uh, if I blush, I could, right? And I mean, for me, that's a little over the top, right? I, I kind of paused a second. I was like, wait a second, that's not the kind of thing you just, you'd want to say when you're confronted with an insult, right? Um, but she does, right? Um, and what happens is that this article, UNESCO, decided to tell me that like it goes way deeper than just like um, being called an insult and having that response. It's like that pause moment. It's um, it goes deeper to uh, gender bias and um, bias and and belittling women. Like it, it, it goes that far, right? It, and it shouldn't. <laughs> that's, it, that's the very least that I have to say about that. And the reason it's like this, I mean, it's because of us. I mean, who else is making AI? They're not creating themselves, right? It, it should be us that is, um, that is making these decisions on whether or not AI should have this coding, this programming, right? Well, yes, right? <laughs> The way it works is that we make AI, we make uh, programming, we make, um, we decide whether or not this AI knows what it knows. And one of the biggest resources is called big data. Big data is like a warehouse of information that um, like has been storing information since uh, it's been created for years, decades, right? It just has this buttload of information that, that is on, unrefined, it just, everything, everything we have. All right, so, um, big data is basically uh, one of the resources that we use to inform these AI. Another resource is um, uh, training sets. Training sets are basically like uh, ways that, that you can give AI um, uh, you, you let them know what they need to know, right? It's an input output, right? You give them what they what what kind of information you want and what kind of information you bring back, okay? And Joey Bolumini, one of my sources, uh, talks about this in her TED talk. She says that uh, it's very um, biased at, because one of her um, projects was a inspirational mirror that she could uh, look into in the morning and uh, it would overlay some type of inspirational message or, or um, figure 
to cheer her spirits. But the problem with that is that it came from an AI algorithm that was very, very biased and did not have enough information, even enough to scan her face. Joy Bumwini is a black woman as well, and she had to resort to using a white mask in order to let her, uh, the downloaded um, algorithm work, right? Which is crazy. <laughs> I thought, uh, blew my mind, right? So um, she talks about ways that we can solve this, right? The ways that we can solve this is um, all we gotta do is make sure that we refine the information that we give um, we give AI. AI should not be given so little that they can't even decide to recognize a black woman's face and we're not giving, we're not refining the information that we give in, in cases like big data where it's just everything we have. And I mean, AI can just be going on Twitter and finding out what, like, what has been happening in 2010 and decide, you know what, this person should go to jail for that long. Right? It, it just shouldn't be the case. We need to refine our information, making sure it's credible, especially from the, the sources that, that people are coding. We, we gotta make sure that uh, people are credible enough to code these things and provide them for the rest of the world. And we also have to make sure that um, we, uh, we, op we, we look at how reliable these, like, these uh, sources and everything we're, they're using are. And um, basically, AI should not <laughs> should not be used in any sort of decision making, right? Uh, unless we refine it to the point where it's useful and not biased. And if not, we should just take them out of courtrooms. It's horrible decision making, right? Um, let me just leave you with this: uh, at 5 a.m., let yourself be the one that wakes you up with an alarm, not an AI that's, that has no information and thinks uh, 5 a.m. is like an average time to wake up in the state, right? Thank you.